Why is the first day of life your most dangerous? And at what age is cancer likely to strike? Keep watching to learn the ways you are most likely to die at any age in the United States. The first day of life is the most dangerous. No matter where you are in the world, your chances of dying at birth are ridiculously high compared to every other day of your life. And that's even true in the United States. In 2013, Save the Children noted that 11,300 American babies die on the first day of life every year, which is more than anywhere else in the industrial world. In fact, there are about twice as many first day deaths in America each year as there are in the entirety of Europe. And just in case you're thinking that's a population thing, it isn't. Total annual births in Europe outnumber births in the United States by about 1 million. According to the CDC, the leading causes of death for newborns here in the United States are low birth weight, congenital defects, and maternal complications. Low birth weight is defined as any baby weighing less than 5 pounds 8 ounces. A big cause of low birth weight is prematurity. Obviously, when a baby is born early, it's less likely to be a healthy weight. But babies can also be born small because they stop growing before birth. Maternal health conditions like high blood pressure, diabetes, and infections can contribute to this, and so can drug use, both prescription and illicit. If you're lucky enough to survive the first day of your life, you still have to get through your first year. As of 2019, infant mortality in the United States was 5.6 deaths per 1,000 births. Taken together, the three leading causes of death for babies under the age of one are birth defects, preterm birth, and injuries. Note, though, that the CDC includes newborn deaths in its numbers, so it's hard to say how the leading causes of death might change if you removed everyone who died during the first day of life. Birth defects are tragically common. In the United States, the CDC reports that about one in every 33 babies is born with a birth defect. This includes more benign conditions like clubfoot and cleft lip and palate, but also a lot of dangerous conditions like major heart defects, spina bifida, and chromosomal defects. Every year in the United States, about one out of every 1,600 babies is born with a combination of a facial and oral deformity. Notably, the third leading cause of death in this age group is accidental injury, which includes suffocation. That's why it's important to put babies to sleep on their backs, remove sheets and pillows from cribs, and avoid falling asleep with your baby in your bed. Once babies become toddlers, they face a whole new set of dangers. Unsurprisingly, the CDC says the leading cause of death for this group is unintentional injury. After all, toddlers are forever climbing on things, knocking things over, swallowing things, and choking on things. Even a very cautious parent may not be aware of every single household hazard. Toddlers who climb on and knock over furniture can be crushed to death. A benign-seeming button battery or a pair of high-powered magnets can be lethal if swallowed. But by far the most dangerous thing in the house is water. In fact, according to the CDC, drowning is the number one accidental cause of death in kids age four and under. It can happen anywhere, even in a bathtub, but the family pool is one of the most glaringly obvious household hazards. It only takes a few minutes for a kid to slip out the back door, fall into the pool, and drown. Drowning is no longer a major cause of death as kids approach school age, but other types of unintentional injury move in to take its place. At this age, the CDC says motor vehicle accidents become the biggest cause of accidental death. What's especially awful about this statistic is a lot of these deaths are preventable. According to the CDC, 38% of kids 12 and younger who die in car accidents aren't properly restrained. That means they either weren't wearing a seatbelt at all or they weren't sitting in an age-appropriate car seat or booster seat. What's more, in 2019, 23% of child motor vehicle deaths were alcohol-related. Sometimes it was the other driver who was impaired, but 63% of the time it was the driver of the car the child was riding in. According to the CDC, at this age, kids also start becoming more susceptible to that major scourge of humanity, cancer. Cancer can kill just about anyone, including children who are most susceptible to leukemia, brain tumors, lymphomas, neuroblastoma, kidney cancer, and bone cancer. Ages 10 to 14 are tough years for kids. They're either in middle school or close to it, and middle school is a difficult environment. Not only do kids have more responsibilities and higher expectations at this age, but this is really when bullying starts to really ramp up and social pressures become disproportionately important. What we're seeing is that this has a tremendous effect on the fragile growing brain of a child. As a result, suicide rates are high for this group. According to the CDC, suicide and motor vehicle accidents are the two most common types of injury death for kids between the ages of 10 and 14. A 2021 report published by the National Institute of Mental Health found that kids with certain risk factors were more prone to death by suicide. 
These include a mental health diagnosis of ADHD or depression, and problems like divorce, trouble at school, and domestic violence. It can be easy for parents and teachers to overlook the signs, so it's worth noting that any mention of suicide in a child this age, even one that seems flippant, should never be ignored. In 2018, the CDC reported that motor vehicle accidents killed 360 kids between the ages of 10 and 14. That same year, 6,308 teenagers and young adults between the ages of 15 and 24 died in motor vehicle accidents. That's around a tenfold difference in deaths from this cause between the first group and the second. Male teens are more than two times as likely as females to die in a motor vehicle accident, and the presence of other kids in the car compounds the risks. Unsurprisingly, the CDC also says that crashes are one and a half times more likely for 16-year-olds than for 18 to 19-year-olds. Teens also have much lower compliance with seatbelt laws, tend to get distracted by their phones, are more likely to speed, and are much more susceptible to the effects of alcohol while behind the wheel. In this age group, homicide also moves up on the list as a major cause of death. In 2018, 6,466 teens and young adults died this way, most of them by firearm. Teens and young adults also have high rates of perpetrating violent crime. In fact, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, in 2018, the rate of adolescents and young adults arrested for the perpetration of violent crimes was 249 per 100,000. Your mid-20s to your mid-30s are your formative years. This is the time of your life when many have either graduated or are about to graduate from college, are thinking about marriage and children, and are really starting to get established in your career. As it turns out, unintentional injury is still the top cause of death for people in this age group. Car accidents, however, are no longer the highest ranking accidental death. Instead, accidental poisonings take first place. In fact, in 2018, there were 15,353 deaths from this cause in the 25 to 34 year old age group. Unintentional poisoning, as it turns out, is mostly just a polite way of saying drug overdose. Well, tonight, the CDC is sounding the alarm about a record number of deaths in America from drug overdoses. Deaths in this category include alcohol poisoning, deaths from street drugs, deaths from prescription medication taken without a doctor's supervision, and deaths that happen because someone took the wrong dose of illegally prescribed medication. Also in the top three for this group, suicide and homicide. So you might think that at this age, finally, most people take fewer risks, and as a result, the accidental death rate starts to decline. Well, as it turns out, there are not a whole lot of changes between this decade of your life and the last one. In fact, in 2018, the CDC reported that the numbers held pretty steady, with 14,978 unintentional poisoning deaths and 5,068 motor vehicle deaths. In general, people's lives do tend to stabilize as they get older. That's not necessarily always the case, though. While it is true that drug use is higher in people between the ages of 18 and 25, even people in older age groups may turn to drugs or alcohol when a major life event like job loss causes those feelings of comfortable stability to suddenly evaporate. The main difference between this decade of life and the last one is that a new cause of death creeps up into the position number two, heart disease, which will remain a looming threat for most of the rest of your life. The list flip-flops a little as you get into your mid-40s and 50s. Unintentional injury finally falls into position number three, but now you start to become more vulnerable to chronic diseases. Cancer is the number one killer in this group. While younger people tend to develop cancers of the blood, bone, brain, and lymph nodes, older adults are more likely to develop lung cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, and bladder cancer. Heart disease is in second place as a leading killer of people in this age group. Your risk for heart disease depends on some factors you can't control, like your age, sex, and genetic factors. Still, smoking, an unhealthy diet, poor exercise habits, and a high-stress lifestyle are things you can control, so that's worth keeping in mind as you approach middle age. As you've just heard, heart disease is the rampaging number one killer in America. You've almost made it to retirement age, and with it comes new risks. Cancer and heart disease are still holding pretty steady in slot numbers one and two, but the third leading cause of death in this age group is now COVID-19. According to the CDC, in 2020, COVID-19 was almost as good at taking down people between the ages of 55 and 64 as cancer and heart disease. COVID-19 is the only infectious disease to make the top three up anywhere on the CDC's list. Because there's more immunity in the general population now, there's some hope that COVID-19 isn't always going to be high on this list. Still, if you're in this age group, getting vaccinated is a good idea. By the time you get to 65, you're pretty set in your ways. 
you like to watch Jeopardy at 7.30, you go to bed at 8.30, and you've been eating bacon for breakfast every morning since you were 32, and you're not about to change that now. That could be one of the reasons why people over the age of 64 are more likely to die from heart disease, because despite the doctor's warnings, they just don't make the healthy lifestyle changes that might ward off potentially deadly heart conditions. According to the American College of Cardiology, older people may also suffer from mobility problems, which can trigger a downward spiral of limited activity and poor heart health. At this age, you tend to also have stiffer blood vessels, and that too can contribute. The CDC lumps everyone 65 and older into the same category, but the truth is that the causes of death do change a bit once you make it to the age of 75. According to Statista, 36.1% of deaths from Alzheimer's disease happen in the 75 to 84-year-old age group. And according to BMC Public Health, adults over the age of 75 also have the highest risk of hospitalization and death from influenza. People in this group have an even higher risk of dying from COVID-19 than people in the 65 to 74 group. One in 100 seniors, people 65 plus here in the U.S., has died of COVID. In fact, as of February 2022, people between the ages of 75 and 84 accounted for 22.2% of all deaths from COVID-19, even though they account for only 4.9% of the population. Still, don't discount the impact of heart disease and cancer in this age group. Both causes of death remain high for people over the age of 75. Not much changes after you pass the age of 85. According to McKnight's long-term care news, heart disease is still the number one killer for people over the age of 85. In 2018, it was responsible for 28.6% of all deaths in this age group, compared to cancer, which claimed only 11.7% of those who died at this age, though it did remain in second place. People over the age of 85 are also vulnerable to dying from Alzheimer's disease, which rises into the top three leading causes of death. According to Statista, in 2021, 36.4% of all Alzheimer's deaths occurred in people over the age of 85. It probably won't surprise you to hear that COVID-19 is also very bad for people in this age group. People over the age of 85 represent just 2% of the population, yet they account for 27.5% of all COVID-19 deaths. If you make it all the way to the age of 100, well, you should have a huge birthday party and stop worrying about how you might die. You've beaten the odds, and you've almost certainly outlived every one of your peers. In fact, according to Discover the Odds, centenarians make up only 1% of the population, so even just living to see your 100th birthday is a huge accomplishment. Still, death finds us all eventually, and the CDC's 2016 report on centenarians in the United States noted that the leading cause of death is still heart disease. At this age, though, Alzheimer's disease is in second place. Centenarians are also vulnerable to death from stroke and cancer, and influenza and pneumonia are also especially dangerous for this group. The CDC's reports came before the pandemic, but we can probably safely assume that COVID-19 is as dangerous for people over the age of 100 as it is for people over the age of 85. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK-8255. 